Welcome back everyone. My name is Sagar and we are back here with another video. So today in this video, we are gonna learn and implement baseline profiles in your production ready application. So if you want to improve the performance of your application by more than 30%, then baseline profiles is your best option. Let me just explain you how it works. So by default, your application works with just in time compilation. But when you add baseline profiles, so it will just generate a text file and that you can add to your play store. And with that baseline profiles, you can guide your app to go with ahead of time compilation instead of just in time. So that will basically pre-compile all your classes and methods that you define in a user journey. So a user journey can be suppose your app is opening, then you are navigating to authentication and from authentication you are navigating to home screen. So that is basically your user journey. And in this entire user journey, whatever classes and methods we are having, so that you can pre-compile. So there you will gain performance. So I have just created a dummy application. So this is a list. Suppose you are getting it from an API call and a user can scroll in this list and they can tap on it, any item and they can navigate to another screen. So suppose this is our user flow and we are going to optimize it with using baseline profile. And, uh, and if you can see here, I am using the latest compose navigation. So if you want to learn about that, I will drop the link of my video in the description. So now using baseline profiles is not that hard. You just have to navigate to this project view, right click on your project, new module. And there you have to select baseline profile generator module and just select this use Gradle manage device. Uh, optionally, optionally, you can also choose your physical device, but uh, I, right now I'm going with this one and finish. So this will generate a separate module for creating your baseline profile. And it will also add some dependency and configuration in your main application uh, build.gradle file. So if you see here, so if you see here, this is our, okay, this is baseline profile module. And if you check our application module, there you can see this one is added. That is our baseline profile module. And if you scroll up, there it is. This plugin is also added. So let us wait. And uh, there you can see two classes are also generated baseline profile generator and startup benchmark. So benchmarking is different. That is basically checking the difference of your performance without, without baseline profile, how much time it was taking, and with baseline profile, how much improvement it is showing to us. So these two files are uh, present in your baseline profile module and once it is generated, so we can also see the module here also. So now if you see the baseline profile module is generated and uh, there you can see these are our two classes and uh, we are going to use baseline profile generator, this one. So this is nothing different and just an instrumented test. That means it will run your physical device or your emulator and it will run your application and whatever rules or flow you are defining, Suppose I'm defining, I will start the application, I will scroll, I will click on one item and then I will navigate. So it will just mimic that flow and it will run it five to six times and it will generate all the classes and methods that are being used in that flow. So now we just have to define our flow here. As you can see, for example, this, this, this. We will not change all the default values. We just have to add the flow here. So let me remove this to do. So first of all, what we have to do, suppose you are making an API call when your app starts. So we have to wait for that API call to finish. So we will just create a function to wait for async call and we'll create a function. And you can see we are having a macro benchmark scope. So we will use that as an extension function. Macro benchmark scope. Wait for async call. So how we will wait? We will have a device object here, dot wait. And here we have to pass one condition. And how we will know that our wait is over and now we are showing our UI. So for that, so for that we will just check if that particular UI is present or not. And in my case, it is my lazy column list. So I'll go to my main application. And there you can see this is my first screen that I am starting and suppose I am getting this list data from an API call and I will surely know that uh, when this list is available in the UI that means my API call has finished. So in my test I just have to check whether this list is present in my screen or not and for that I can use a test tag. Test 
tag and I will name it items list and in your case it can be some data list or any collection or anything that you are showing in your UI but then how can I access this test tag here so you cannot directly access the test tags so you need a resource so I will just paste this line here and there you can see let me import this okay there you can see I am I am waiting until my UI has an object which has by resource name as items list so items list is the name and which is by resource and uh, here I am defining it by tag I have to tell my automator that uh, treat this thing as a resource so for that I can just come to my top level parent and in your case it can be your nav host your scaffold or whatever you are using in the main top level that is you that you are defining in your activity so you don't have to define it everywhere just define it once and it will work everywhere so just add the semantics test tag as resource id and that will be true so here it is showing experimental let us add this and now this should work so now we can access our items list inside of our test function and this is just a timeout that means for 20 seconds we are waiting if this thing is available then it's good else our test will fail so now we know that in our device this thing is present but how we will know that this thing has rendered all the items that are present inside of it so we have to wait when this item this items list has rendered all the things inside of it so for that i will just add two extra lines so I have to get the instance of this list object that I am showing device dot find object and I am definitely sure that this object is now available in the UI. So I will find object by this resource ID and I got this object and now I will wait until all these things are loaded. So after this function now you will know that first screen has rendered and uh, you are showing your data in the screen. So now what you have to do you might have to scroll or uh, whatever you have to do. So in my case I will scroll down. So let me just write it here, scroll down and I will also create a function for it. There you can see we have to find the object that is our items list and first we will define the gesture margin so that from, from horizontal and vertical we are not performing any navigation because in Android devices if you know if we can scroll up then we are navigating to home. So we don't have to do that that's why we are defining this divide by 5 and after setting our gesture margin then we are using fling function to scroll down and then we are waiting and now after scrolling i have to go to details screen that means i have to perform a click operation on one item in my list so if you see in our first line we are getting our items list and in our second line we are getting all the items that means this is our ui object and this is actually the list of our old items because from our ui objects we are finding all the objects which has a resource id as item so let me also define this item resource id in our screen one so all these items and inside of this text so this is my one particular item dot test tag item Okay, let me define it here so this is my actually items list and this is single item inside of my list so first I'm getting the UI object then I'm getting the actual list of all the items and uh, from my list I'm clicking on one particular item which has this ID so I hope now this is clear and uh, then I'm waiting while this thing is gone because you can clearly see this thing how you will know that we are navigating from one screen to another when our first screen is not visible and uh, this is what we are doing it here until gone this ui object so when our item list is no more visible in the ui that means we are we already navigated and uh, that's it this is our complete user flow and uh, let me also share some extra resources with you so for a bonus you can have this function and uh, if in your production application you are using some permissions then uh, you can use this function and use it before making your async call so that you can basically allow all the permissions that are popping up if you are having notification permission location permission then you can define it here something like that 
and one more important thing that wasted my hell lot of time when i was running this baseline profile so you have to go to your developer options just go to your system setting in your emulator or your physical device okay i think this feature is not available in my emulator but uh, you have to just enable disable permission monitoring and uh, and if you and then if you are having any permission related issues so they won't come anymore and after this you can uh, just go to your build variants and select the release build So now release build is selected and uh, you are having any error here so that is also gone now and now we can finally build and we can wait okay if you see now in the emulator it is running my automated test it is scrolling the list and it is clicking on any random item because we are using here any index so basically it will run this automated flow multiple times there you can see it is still running it will scroll the list automatically and it will also click i'm not doing anything now it had clicked so so while it is doing all the things what it is doing internally it is compiling all the classes and functions that are being used in this whole flow and it will store it in a file uh, that you can see in app build uh, not build source and then release and there you can see generated so it has generated two txt files baseline profile and startup profile so there is this uh, non understandable whole code and and this is your baseline profile so now what you can do is you have to also push these things into your repository and uh, while you are building your aab file so you have to also keep this thing and that's it it will be used to pre compile all your classes in a user journey also one more thing in any case if uh, this run button is not working for you then you can use this command so i am pasting it here so you can also get uh, this whole repository down the link in the description i will drop, just drop the link of this repository so you can just come to this baseline profile generator and this is the gradle run configuration so you have to go to this edit the configuration add the gradle just paste this run task here whatever i am uh, providing you here okay and and that is it for today i hope you like this video i hope you gain some performance boost from this baseline profile and make sure to subscribe to my channel so thank you for watching